the long anticipated memoir by the late Dave McCartney, undoubtedly one of New Zealand's greatest ever rockers, is being celebrated at the Auckland Writers Festival tonight. Gutter Black is an incredible story of music, mateship, and a good deal of madness as well. Yes, indeed. Welcome, Dave's wife, Donna, and music maven and friend, Karen Hay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This must be a, a really emotional time for you because it's, it's coming up to the one year anniversary. Um, and the book is out and it's written by him and it's a, f a brilliant read, yeah. Very difficult week for you this week, hasn't it been? Yes. It it's has been a been hard year, it. but particularly this week yeah. and, um, and to, to see it manifested. But kind of cool too, I mean it, it, it's a celebration of rock and roll, isn't it? As rock and roll as you can get. Mm. Yeah. I mean I'm thrilled to see the book out. Because mm. he spent a decade working on it, didn't he? Well, well, thereabouts. He on started it a decade ago. Right. Okay. I mean, he, yeah. he was a really busy man. Yeah. And his main focus was songwriting. Yeah. And he did a lot of other things. And he was a great family man. And he mm. spent a lot of time with our kids. And so his days were incredibly full. He was a very, very active, disciplined man. Yeah. No matter how late he came home at night, he was always up at eight o'clock in the morning. Wow. He, he was never idle. He, he was always creating something, building something, making something at home writing, doing something. So yeah, he worked on the busy. book for 10 years, but it wasn't yeah. consistent. He wasn't a writer as such who's had a certain number of hours a day to spend on a book. He, well, he, he might not have been a writer as such, but he can certainly write. It's, Isn't the writing yeah, in it's fabulous. Brilliant. Yeah, it's fabulous. It's like got it really is. Beautiful um, metaphors, some lovely descriptions. Yeah. And uh, you were just saying before, for your, you were born in the 70s. Yeah. This was uh, the, the, the that part of the day in the 70s. <laughs> yeah. yes. But his descriptive passages in it are really astonishingly good. Absolutely. Great writer, and it's such a shame that he isn't able to see the, the, uh, the manifestation of this in the reaction work. to it too. I mean, you don't even yeah. have to be a major muso to love that book. You know, heaps out yes. of it. What was? Um, how would you describe his contribution to the music industry? Well, if you forgive me for saying, he's the real deal. Rock and roll glamour is uh, Dave McCartney. Yeah. Uh, and I love this book because throughout it, he's so understated in that. Um, he's so understated. He 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 is that real Kiwi yeah. um, out going out into the world, off to America, try and crack the American market, um, but always looking at it from that uh, New Zealand perspective. And yeah. I think that really comes across. And I think he uh, he undersells himself, but he kind of always did, didn't he? Very very humble man. Yeah. Absolutely no ego. Just so gentle and kind all the time. And that's exactly, and I met him in 2012 when he came on the show, that's exactly the feeling that I went away with, yeah. Tell me about the, the Mandrix Mansion in Ponsonby, features quite oh my God. <laughs> prominently in the book. How long have you got? <laughs> I was 17. <laughs> oh, 17. You know, wow. I come from an athletic background and really quite conservative family. I was yes. just out of school. My God, I think my first experience of Mandrix Mansion was going to a party and the power went down and someone ran across the road and <laughs> pulled the power plug out of someone else's house and you saw their power go down and all of a sudden the power was up again at Mandrax Mansion. I mean they were, it never stopped 24 hours a day. Yeah, it was just party It party was time. very exciting and interesting. It was just a fascinating array of people from all walks of life and it was yeah, a lot of fun. And there were wonderful people who lived there like Mark Hunter from Dragon and yep. All kinds of amazing characters pass through that house. Another amazing character, uh, Graham Brazier. You, you write a really interesting chapter at the end and you talk about your relationship with him because you were married to him. Yes, I first. was. And then, however it happened, you decided you'd hook up with Dave. But the three of you stayed great mates. Yes, we did. You know? we, we've, we've stayed. I think the main thing about our relationship was that we were always friends right from the beginning and we were, kind of grew up together. Yeah. You know, I watched my daughter now and her group of friends, and it was, we were, we were so young, mm. you know. Tell me about the time that, um, well, it was kind of a number, actually, a number of times in there, that Dave almost died. The, uh, the one where he was electrocuted was the biggie. I'm in heaven. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that was a very, very dramatic night. I was there that night, and Graham did lit I mean, he was thrown from the front of the stage and pinned against the back wall of the stage. With an that is a, a big stage in yeah. those days. Yeah. He grabbed it, it wasn't earth, and it flung him. He just flew and hit the wall of the stage. And, and Graham had the most incredible presence of mind. Everyone else was just in shock. Yeah. And Graham leapt up and booted the microphone out of his hand. And that saved his life. And, and then gave him the press of life as well. Not at first, because okay. he didn't die immediately. It was... <laughs> 
Um, you know, he, he, he was kind of staggered over it. And someone said, oh, give him a coffee. And <laughs> <laughs> God, he's a bit more than that. And all of a sudden, his heart gave out and there he was on the floor. And of course, he wrote that wonderful song, I'm in Heaven, yeah. based on his experience of and I love the, the fact, afterlife. Wow. I love the yeah. fact that in here he also talks about there's no wash. You know, nobody cared. Right. No, well, I think like yeah. yeah, someone right. I remember the yeah. owner of the nightclub or someone like that standing over him saying, "Oh, you know, he's just faking it. Get up. Yeah. <laughs> Get back <laughs> on stage." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I say they tried to crack the states. It, it didn't happen. They went for sort of a, a heady seven or eight or nine months or so and had a wicked time, <laughs> as detailed in the book. Um, well, what pioneers, Jeanette? Yeah. What pioneers? Because these guys, you know, these guys laid the foundation for so many other people, and they, they to me, are like a lost generation. They're a generation that actually went out there and did it yeah and uh, and it's never easy to uproot yourself from your your home and go and try and crack it in another market yeah. these days you can just mp3 it absolutely you know, that's true they're doing it the hard yards weren't they yeah the real way thanks yeah. Dave yeah absolutely <laughs> we do thank him it's um it's such a cool read He's a great writer. Thank you so much for stopping by and sharing it with us and I would urge everyone to grab a copy and, and have a read because he's you know he's a legend in our country hey nice to see you. Thank you. Thanks, Jeanette. All right, Gutter Black is out now. Tickets are still available to the Writers' Festival event as well, celebrating Dave McCartney's music and memoir tonight at the Altair Centre. Just head to our website for all the details you need. After the break, sick of sweatpants, Jackie's got comfy yet styly clothes for when you're feeling a little bit blah this winter. <laughs>